Why do gentlemen prefer blondes, particularly with a breathy voice? Exhibit A, one Marilyn Monroe. Now, sometimes described as childish, the quality of her voice was a signature aspect of her iconic persona. And you could even make the case that it set her apart from the pack of starlets of her time. That's because the high frequency of her speaking voice may have been inadvertently broadcasting something about her body. Now, we know from studies of some birds and some animal species that listeners can figure out body size and the intent of what's being communicated based on the frequency, the voice quality, and the resonance of a vocalization. In fact, low frequency growls that you might hear in a fallow deer suggest to the listener a larger body size, dominance or even aggressiveness, whereas a high frequency sound suggests a smaller body size, submissiveness and fear. So what about humans out in the wild? Do these same frequencies hold true in the way that we perceive one another? In some ways, yes. In a study called Human Vocal Attractiveness as signaled by body size projection, researchers found that nearly across the board, male listeners prefer a female voice that signals a small body size with relatively high pitch, wide format dispersion and breathy voice like Marilyn. And a side note here, a breathy voice is indicative of the higher pitches that you'd hear in younger, thinner vocal cords, aka youth, glorious youth. As for female listeners, they prefer a male voice that signals a large body size with low pitch and narrow formant dispersion or resonance. But here's the thing, females like a little breathiness in their baritones. And the idea here is that breathiness in a male voice is a cue that the speaker is large enough to be attractive, but not an aggressive jerk. A gentle giant, if you will. Looking at you, Barry White. Oh yeah. By the way, Marilyn Monroe was a breathy talker not because she was trying to innately portray herself as a doe-eyed young thing with thin and reedy vocal cords. She did it because it was an effective strategy for concealing a lifelong stutter. So it just so happens that increasing the amount of air passing through the vocal cords lends an aspirated quality to the voice as well as tricking the brain into not stuttering. Hey, if all this vocalization talk in humans and animals makes you wonder, can goats really yell? Do animals have accents? Well, check out this video. All will be revealed. If you wanna check out more videos, blogs, podcasts, and maybe even some hidden messages or hidden imagery, well, check out stufftoblowyourmind.com. <laughs>